Okay, everyone. So I mentioned a while ago that there's some cases where you won't have any compressive stress or any um, tensile stresses, depending on the shape of the beam. And this is because of a beam that's eccentrically shaped. It's right here. You see this beam right here, and it is eccentrically shaped. It has this weird little, you know, outside section right here. Now, just like normal, if you were to apply stresses on this beam, it's going to have an internal bending moment. But it's also going to have an internal bending moment simply due to being eccentric. To balance everything out, you're going to have to have a moment here to keep this force and this force right here from causing it to rotate. So with this, you're going to have two components to your normal stress. One is going to be just due to your internal bending moment. And the second is going to be due to the force being applied to your beam. If you want to, you could then rewrite this. So there's the internal bending moment caused by being eccentric. There's our distance to centroid, moment of inertia, all like normal, but also adding in the force over area because this is a beam that's being like stretched. It's being stretched. And when you have this, you're going to have two components. So we're going to have our uniform stress due to the axial force, as well as the stress caused by the eccentric bending moment. And so when you add those together, well, you're going to have, you know, more tensile stress in this case. Or if it was a compressive force, you'd have more compressive stresses. One or the other is going to happen. So I know this is a small section, so please just focus in on this equation right here. Huh, so much writing. Let's get out of that clear up a bit. Focus on the equation right there, and you'll be good. It's not very hard to use. So thanks for listening. Next time we're going to jump straight into example. So I hope these are helping you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.